when it happened, the day that it happened, it hit. It was like, the first thing, it was like, a, we heard a big old noise, and then it was, it was like, we had, my roof had, like, torn off. And when my roof had torn off, it, like, we had a hole in it, and then water had started flooding in my house from the, uh, the rain and everything, and the winds just had kind of ripped it off. And then, my, actually, my, dining room, living room and all that, was flooded with water, was trying to get all the water out. And it was horrible, because we was like scared to know what was going on, we didn't know what was on the bus, and we had pulled off, so we didn't know what was going on, then we really found out there was a lot of tornadoes that hit that area. Uh, then we, uh, we kind of like tried to get towards the front door, we got to the door, and there was trees falling everywhere, it was like, uh, you could hear whistling, like tornadoes, there was so many tornadoes, you could hear whistling and then wind and trees were just snapping, falling down like it was nothing, like somebody was just cutting them down, it was like that in that whole area. And it was huge trees, big huge oak trees, and then, and then uh, they had started dropping on power lines and stuff, and then people was trapped in, and we, like I said, um, it was about, probably took about an hour, and after the hour was over, realized how many trees we realized like, was trapped. So in that neighborhood, we was all trapped, and so it took us about, like I said, a week to cut these huge trees down with chainsaws to try to make a way to get out, to get some food and water. We didn't take a, couldn't take a bath. I mean, we couldn't get any water for like about five days. They didn't respond too much with the food, and then the banks were shut down. That's another thing, the ATM, if you had money, you couldn't get to money. So it took a whole week for you to try to get to the, the ATM. You couldn't, they was all shut down, they couldn't, and then the stores was taking cash. They was taking nothing but cash, and if you had credit card, you couldn't even use it, so you had to have cash on you, so that was terrible, because if you didn't have cash, you was out of luck. The ATMs, you couldn't get your money, so it was messed with that, because it took about a whole week when you was able to, I think, without power, but that affected the power too with the banks and everything, so pretty much. And then uh, water, FEMA came in and got, they gave us water, like about four or five days later, FEMA came in, and we had, uh, they had set up stops and get water and stuff, so we had to get water and gas. We couldn't get any gas. Gas was out. It was like for about two or three days, so we didn't have any gas. You was limited to travel. You really couldn't go anywhere. We kind of had to wash up with the water that they gave you. The water, uh, bottle water. You had to kind of wash up with that. Actually, so it was horrible. I pray God that we never had to go to another Katrina because it was like it, it changed our lives. Then I have my house insurance didn't pay for it. FEMA promised they was going to give me assistance. They didn't even pay for it. City was gonna give us assistance. I didn't get any assistance, so we had to wind up really our lives was changed because what we had built for so long, it took a long time to, to rebuild it and we had to pay out of our pocket because our insurance company wouldn't pay. They said it was flood. They said it flooded new FEMA came and they said that they were they were gonna pay and they never did. So we wound up at the work hard and kind of try to get our house back together and we Never got it back to the point. We did have a house in Waveland, I forgot about that. We had a beach house. We lost that. It went in Waveland, Mississippi. We had that and it went underwater, so we lost that that house. FEMA never did give us assistance on it, and the, the, the insurance company would pay because it was flood and we called everybody on flood, so we wouldn't be able to build that house back, so they had to tear it down and demolish that one. So it's like, like I said, we build our lives on stuff that you work for hard, and it's just like, like a nightmare just vanished all of a sudden one day. So that was that's not a good thing. My parents they was hoping to rebuild it. But unfortunately, like I said, they tore it down and they hadn't had the funds to build it, so it's never been rebuilt back. Even the one couple, uh, man I mean the one man, he was on a jewelry store, he died because coming out the door, his big old tree fell on his house and as he was coming out, it fell upon him and he died. His wife got injured pretty bad too, but she survived. She was in critical condition, but she didn't survive. But he did yeah, die. In New Orleans, I had family. I had family that, uh, well, they was trapped in New Orleans. They was trapped on a rooftop for like about ooh, two weeks in New Orleans. They, we have a house in New Orleans, a family house. They was trapped for two weeks, like on the rooftops, and they couldn't get out. No boat. Boat, it was like getting so many people, and they couldn't get out. Was praying to hope we get out, but it took so many days that they didn't want to bring so many people to the rescue. I was with my family, not doing anything. It was with my family. It hasn't been much improvement, though. Not like I wished it would have been. I don't think it's much improvement. You can't go down the coast and see the beautiful houses because a lot of people got caught on that deal, too. All stayed in the insurance companies, they got them on blood, so it was 
it changed a lot and I can't, I can't see too much progress because you don't see a lot of houses back because a lot of people then you think they build their lives on this retire and they old they can't work anymore so you think about it's like their whole life changed and they depressed it's like people just driving living a dream and depression you can tell their minds are just wandering and because you know like imagine the stress on you because the stress the stress on me I know that because you like in a dream like you're dreaming and you just like you know your whole what you build your life on just destroyed in one day and if you're old you I, I feel sorry for them because they can't work or rebuild that I had neighbors and stuff they moved to, to Alama there was this place and they said it was chaos too they said it was horrible but they had to stay in shelters uh, and it they moved to different places, Texas and stuff. They wound up, wound up being there. Didn't want to really be there, but they wound up having to uh, get some kind of assistance and stay there until they could, was able to come back to their houses to try to savage what they had. And uh, we were without power for about 14 days, which was really remarkable because of all the damage. And, uh, Mississippi Power Company did a great job to get power restored, but still, for a couple of weeks, we were without power. And anybody who was within uh, a thousand feet of a body of water, I mean, the, the houses, uh, by and large, were just completely gone. So, yeah. you know, you multiply that times about 40 miles, and uh, 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 at least two blocks by 40 miles. So, the term uh, invented called slabbed. That means that all you had left was a slab if you were within a couple of blocks of, of any body of water. Yeah. Another word that was coined was to muck out the damage. So you'd go in and if the water was, for those who still had houses, if the water had come in at five feet, then what you'd do is you'd just cut everything down from five feet down below and muck out all the mud, shovel the mud out and all that sort of thing. It was a difficult thing to do. It was like it was, like it was a huge eraser that just erased many, many houses and businesses along the Mississippi Gulf Coast. The elevation is much higher now, and uh, the, you know, the wind is, is a tough thing in a hurricane, but even the greater damage is the, the storm surge, the water that comes with it. It was just difficult finding your way around because all the landmarks were gone. Uh, we had a higher uh, storm surge here, but the water came in and then left and went back out. Whereas in New Orleans, because of their uh, geography, the water came, the, uh, it, uh, the, the dam was, uh, the levees were breached, but the water just stayed for a lot longer. So they had a different kind of challenge than what we had. Uh, there were a lot of very generous people who uh, after a couple of days, we were able to get through and we brought water and food, that sort of thing. Through the devastation, the, the, the remarkable thing is that people work together so much. We had great help from the state of states of Texas and Florida, and I mean, every, just literally all over came down to help. The, yeah, I evacuated to Montgomery, Alabama, and we came back three days later. When uh, I came back, I was. Uh, every vehicle coming southbound was some type of emergency relief vehicle, whether it was a power company truck or ambulance or fire truck or police uh, vehicle. I mean, I saw vehicles from Canada uh, and all over coming down to help the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and that's when I knew we were going to be okay. Yeah, for months, schools were out, power outages, roads were down, flooding, um, stores were closed, uh, food sources, gas. People went without gas. Um, we had people salvaging gas. Oh, yes. A lot of people evacuated, but there was still a lot that didn't because they didn't think it was going to be as bad as it was. Where we're at right now, um, the water was, you couldn't even stand where you're standing right now. The water was too, I mean, it was just ridiculous. You can actually see the water lines from where the water got to at the top of the building right there where they still haven't painted. All, water, all this was completely covered in water. I mean, but where we're from in Socher, it's more country, so you absolutely could not travel because of the trees in the road. A lot of people were stranded on top of their roofs, and um, we lost a lot of the antebellum homes on the beach that were very historic to the coast. We had a little help from like FEMA and everything, but I feel as if we could have had a lot more help. Yeah. They could have we had little resources. More evacuation for the people who don't 
have transportation and things like that. Um, I'd say because a lot of the people who said they didn't evacuate is because they didn't have a way to evacuate. Um, they could have opened more roads for evacuation. They could have took in the lanes that people weren't coming in on and put people to go out on yeah. um, to evacuate the community a whole lot faster, in my opinion. They have a tendency yeah. of here on the coast telling us we're going to be getting bad weather and it's just a sprinkle shower. We had a storm that actually came through not far before Katrina that didn't do anything. It wasn't bad at all and it actually died down. It, I think it was they, they scared us and it actually died down to a tropical depression. It wasn't a hurricane anymore. So a lot of people thought Katrina was going to do the same. It was definitely underestimated. And it, yes. Here, a lot of people, you know, we, we know the water's coming. There is no levee to try to protect us. We know when we're close enough to the water, if a hurricane's coming, it's going to get us because the waters here never settle. They always rise very high. That's one good thing I can say about the coast. Um, even, even though there was people who didn't have transportation and evacuations, there was a lot of people who offered to help and stay behind and help or come back when it was over and help save the lives of those who were stuck and were stranded. Um, and even our military, I, I give a big thing to our military because um, they had to go through a lot um, as into cleaning up the remains of the people who, who were left behind and they cope with that as well on a daily basis just as the ones who suffered from being involved in it. Just support. We need a lot of support if something like that was to happen again. Um, like FEMA, I know they did a big job. They did. They played a big role. The military played a big role. We just need support, help. I think the coast is more, we've grown. Um, we're more pre prepared as a community. We've learned to work together and to build our community back. And with that, I honestly think we're strong enough that we can withstand another hurricane like Katrina. Because we have now have the resources and we have the we're a lot um, more experienced. We're, yeah, we're a lot more experienced with evacuation and the things that we went through and had to experience. And people will take it more seriously and they'll be a lot more wiser with their decisions if another one was to touch down on the coast. There, a lot of people, in my opinion, I believe they didn't evacuate because they didn't have the money for gas because or to um, for a hotel to stay or family to run to. The shelters here got full quick for the people who didn't have the money to evacuate, that could evacuate. Um, they should offer shelters in different states. Um, they should offer transportation to those shelters for those who can't afford to evacuate because the community should be important and it should be allowed to have those funds for people like that. Yeah. Who Because there are a lot of people here who are on low income um, and they don't have the money if a storm just up out of the blue decides to hit the coast to evacuate their families. and also pay for food and gas and find a home or somewhere to stay. Other states helping out help a lot. Even if we aren't in need yet because it hadn't hit us and we're not in the disaster zone yet, but we're preparing for the disaster. And to evacuate more people saves lives and it saves from so much less confusion and combustion here on the coast when it's over with. Um, a lot of our churches here got destroyed. Um, and a lot of people turn to God a lot for when you're in a time of need like that. Um, and you can tell the communities come together and brought Bibles and things like that. For the churches who, on the beach, um, they put up chairs just to have church where their church was, even in a torn down building. Um, a lot of support, yeah. It helps because that's what you need at a time like that. If you were to drive along the beach and um, look at all the antebellum homes and where the beach is now and go back and find things from where right after it happened. The roads were very destructive and you can tell we've done a lot of work, but there's still a lot to be done.
Copa Casino of Indianapolis, Cornwall Island Indian Casino, Rainforest South, all these massive buildings, Mississippi Power Company, were destroyed. They were built in different decades, still stayed the same day, and rebuilt in the years thereafter. What happened in Copa was unprecedented, the recovery was unprecedented, and the people of the city of Copa have come back better than ever. It's not about the damage, it's about the recovery. The story doesn't end on August 29, 2005. That's the end. I want to tell you that we all know that we're here to celebrate God's grace, God's recovery, and the protection of us. We did lose citizens in Katrina. That was tragic. But I know those citizens. I knew those citizens, and I know where they are today, and never since they moved today. It would not have happened the way that it did had it not been for some unsung heroes that we can't thank them enough. Senator Thad Cochran. I wish that he had been here more lately, but Senator Trent Lott deserves a major tip of the hat and a thank you and gratitude. He was amazing. Certainly Governor Haley Barr was incredible. And George Bush came here 16 times to check on us. That was on this level. And had it not been for them, we would not have recovered the way that we have. Thing is that people work together so much. We have like, God bless America.